stars and highlights this week, we take a look at the tense situation developing over the dispute in the South China Sea. Last Sunday, public demonstrations took place in Hanoi, where a group of anti-Chinese protesters chanted, Down with China! and the Spratleys and Paracels belong to Vietnam, in front of the Chinese embassy, as they waved flags and sang patriotic songs. This came after the Vietnamese government lodged a protest with China, when it said Chinese vessels damaged equipment in use by a Vietnamese survey ship within Hanoi's 200 nautical mile exclusive maritime economic zone. On that same day, activists in Manila marched on the U.S. Embassy in the Philippines' capital, condemning Washington's involvement in the South China Sea dispute, saying that the U.S. government is interfering with Philippine affairs. The protest came after the U.S. ambassador to ASEAN said last month that Washington is a stakeholder in the South China Sea tussle. On Thursday, another group of protesters rallied in front of the Chinese embassy, calling the government in Beijing a bully and a violator of peace. These public reactions reflect the heightening of tension over an area under contestation, some in full and some in parts, between China, Vietnam, the Philippines, Brunei, Malaysia and Taiwan. The aggressive posturing, like last Tuesday's conducting of live firing Navy drill by Hanoi, including last Thursday's dispatch of a patrol ship by Beijing to the area, worries many observers. U.S. involvement in the affairs also intensifies the situation, prompting angry responses from China. Beijing's insistence on having the territorial disputes settled bilaterally with all the claimant states including its claim that the chain of islands belonged to China for centuries, prompted the Filipino government to start this week to refer to the South China Sea as the West Philippine Sea. It remains to be seen what the outcome will be, but some have suggested that resource-sharing model need to be worked out as part of the solution in settling this territorial dispute. Thai News Agency reporting for ASEAN TV. Indonesian court on Thursday jailed radical Islamist cleric Abu Bakar Bashir for 15 years for funding a terrorist group that was planning attacks against Westerners and political leaders. The 72-year-old preacher showed little emotion as the judge read out the guilty verdict and sentence at the end of the four months trial in the South Jakarta District Court. Bashir immediately promised to appeal the sentence, which he said was the work of the devil. He denied his involvement with terrorism but repeatedly defended the terror camp as legal under Islam. He told reporters before the verdict that the trial was an attempt by the US and Australia to reduce his public role in Indonesia. Prosecutors had demanded a 20-year life sentence for Bashir who was found guilty of providing thousands of dollars to a terror cell operating in Aceh province. Bashir is seen as a spiritual leader of Islamist militants including regional terror network Jama Islamir blamed for the 2002 bombings of tourist area on Bali Island, which killed 202 people. The sentence was announced amid high security at the Jakarta court, where hundreds of hardline Bashir supporters gathered, calling for the release of the controversial cleric. Nearly 3,200 police and soldiers were deployed in the area after threats to bomb 36 locations across Indonesia were spreading through Twitter and text messages. The two-day World Economic Forum 2011 on East Asia wrapped up last Monday as the region's leaders and captains of industries look for better economic responses to the forces of globalization in the future. World Economic Forum under the banner of responding to new globalism took place for two days from June 12 to the 13th. The event aimed to tackle critical issues facing the region, like rising demand for resources and its response to natural disasters. In his opening remark, Indonesian President Susilo Bambang Yudhoyono said that Asia's remarkable economic growth will put the continent at the heart of global economy. The president of Southeast Asia's largest economy also stated that Asia must keep its markets and societies open, tackle food, energy and water insecurity and inequity while focusing on youth development. Addressing the leaders of Asia, the Director General of the World Trade Organization or WTO, Pascal Lamy said, 
there is a need to redefine shared values among countries in order to strike a balance between new emerging global power, future economic crisis and other contemporary issues like food scarcity, trade protectionism and regional arms races. Meanwhile, the British banking executive Stuart Gulliver, who is the group chief executive of HSBC Holdings, call for an improvement of economic infrastructure in East Asia, urging the governments of the region to free up financing bottlenecks and develop pension and insurance industries to facilitate long-term funding. Thailand will host the next World Economic Forum in 2012. ASEAN TV news team of Thai News Agency reporting for ASEAN TV. And we wrapped up this week ASEAN highlights by taking a look at the development of the vaccine for dengue in which Thailand is a part of and also to mark what was the first ASEAN dengue day last Wednesday. Dengue fever is a mosquito-borne disease that infects around 220 million people annually around the world. Two million, mostly children, develop dengue hemorrhagic fever, which is a life-threatening form of the disease. Asia alone bears 75% of the current global dengue disease burden, according to the World Health Organization. Following the Thai Ministry of Public Health data, 50,000 people in the kingdom contracted dengue last year. So far this year, 14,000 have been infected and 10 have died. To date, there is neither vaccine nor medicine that can treat dengue and doctors can only provide symptomatic treatment. But that's all about to change. Thousands of children in Ratchaburi province of Thailand have been taking part in a global study aimed at discovering whether a vaccine developed by the French company Sanofi Pasteur, the vaccine division of the pharmaceutical giant Sanofi Adventist, can prevent children from contracting the disease. The vaccine is in its final stages of development and should it prove effective, it will be a world first and will be used to immunize people against dengue fever. The goal for us, uh, the holy grail, will be to provide this vaccine to the public that need it, to the population, to the children, to adults living in Asia and Latin America, so that they access the vaccine. And thanks to vaccination and to high vaccination coverage, you can really get out of the disease burden due to dengue, which is on the top priorities of all these Asian countries. Towards that help, you need really a global public health effort and coordinations with Public Health and Ministry of Health. Nevertheless, experts warn that vaccination alone is not the solution. Other form of preventive measures that involves a partnership between the government and community is also necessary particularly in improving the level of surveillance and clinical management of the disease, as well as implementing some form of mosquito population control. To do it, we have to have the help of the community, the people that live in the houses where the transmission occurs. And so what it means is you have to have a bottom-up, the community helping government uh, uh, control, and what I call uh, government-community partnerships. Uh, and uh, there's no single approach that's going to uh, be uh, fully effective. Uh, vaccines are going to be, contribute a tremendous amount, but you need to continue to control the mosquitoes uh, along with the, the vaccines. The vaccine, if it's proven to be successful, will go a long way in saving lives and preventing dengue infections for people in more than 100 countries across Asia and Latin America. It is expected that the preliminary result of vaccine efficacy would come out in 2012. And that's it for this edition of Arzen Highlights. On behalf of the Arzen News Desk at Thai News Agency, I hope you all have a lovely weekend and so at the heart.